How's it? How's it? And thank you for joining me for my continuation of this D24 engine teardown. In the last video, we found some issues, mainly that the engine was seized. So for this video, we're going to be getting some kerosene in the engine. But first, we got to pull all the injectors. So that's what I'm starting right here. Getting them all PB blastered up to rip them out. Yeah, I'm also not convinced that the camshaft is good. So in this video, we'll also be tearing out the camshaft and having a much closer look at it before I start buying any parts. And now here I am numbering all of the lines, just in case the project takes a back burner and I need to remember what lines they are, you know, two years from now. These lines are 17 millimeter, by the way. You can see I already took them off. My camera just did not want to record them for some reason. Doing Roman numerals. Probably the first time I've ever used those in a practical sense. Less lines. And now I'm taking out the lines on the pump side. There's a bit of trouble with the lines and where they connect to the injection pump because when you unscrew the 17 on the line, sometimes you start to take out the 14 millimeter nozzle that's on the pump. So you got to get a 14 end wrench and a 17 end wrench to take them off both and not, you know, disassemble your injection pump while you're taking it apart. And my head's in the way, so you'll just have to imagine that, but it's kind of tough to walk you through it because uh, it's a very tiny space. You'll just have to do your best. And there you go. Those are all the lines. And now it's time to pull out the injectors themselves. This is a 27 millimeter extra deep. Just a normal 27 socket won't work. I tried that initially and no dice. So this is just one I got off of Amazon. I'll include a link to it on the bottom. And I'm just taking these off with an end wrench. I already did this, fair warning, but the camera didn't want to record. So I just wanted to show it again. And getting it off with an end wrench, that's just um, that's just not reasonable. Before I had a breaker bar and then like a five foot cheater bar on it. So if you got to put some serious force on it, don't worry about it. They can take it.
and I'm saving cylinder five for last. When I took that off with the cheater bar, it squeaked and squirked, and it was maybe twice as hard to take off as the other ones. And that's because it's full of junk. Probably from our blown head gasket. I'm going to take it out and take a look at it. So there's a good chance that that's where the oil's getting into. Might be blown in multiple places, but there's oil getting in there, I think. And also, it looks like one of the return ears are hammered. You can kind of see it there. I'm going to put it in front of the camera in a second, but it's way nastier. All black and cruddy. Thanks for showing it to us for two seconds. And here here we go. I'll, I'll show it in the head now. There's one, two, three, four, and five. Five, you can see, is way nastier. It's a much darker and sootier color. A little bit harder to see with the LED light, but if you're there, you could tell. Now it's time to actually put the kerosene in it, and I make a huge mess. Watch how long it takes me to learn things. Just spill everywhere. And we're putting about a tablespoon in here. And about a tablespoon on the engine. That's important. This is an indirect injection diesel. So the pistons are practically flat. It doesn't take a lot to actually, like, fill it. Now we're learning. Pour it on its side. Now totally overflow this one. There you go. You can see it pissing all out the side. Now it takes a while for it to dribble through the pre-chamber. So fill it slowly. And be sure to dribble tons on the valve cover. You can hear it glub glub glubbing its way in there, putting an extra amount in that cruddy, nasty cylinder 5. The valve cover can have a little bit of kerosene as a treat. Okay, now we have the motor being seized issue fixed as much as it can be for now. So now it's time to start working on taking the camshaft out. First thing you're going to want to do is take off the injection pump time gear, which you'll note is not what I'm doing. But it doesn't really matter. Uh, I'll figure it out eventually. And this bolt is a 19, or three quarters will work as well. I'm not entirely organized, so you could just watch me shuffle through my toolbox for a year trying to find that silly little bugger. Now it's time to get a puller on this thing. Now it's kind of tough to find a puller that'll work. I got one with these sort of flat claws. 
I scooped this one off of AutoZone, but like even the three pack that you get from Harbor Freight won't work. And even this doesn't work. I end up just using a pry bar, but just watch me roach the thing. And already now I, I realize I'm about to destroy it. It's just pure denial keeping me going. It's already out of the packaging and the thing cost like $10. So bend away. And look at that. It's hosed. But here's the easy way to do it. Find something nice and solid and rip on it with the pry bar. I do this with all the gears too. Now it's time to pull the back gear off. First we gotta take this cover off. This is a 13 on this side. Off it comes. And the second bolt is a 10 mil. And off it comes. And here you see I'm about to realize where I messed up. Cue realization in three, two, one. Whoops. You're about to rotate the camshaft. Don't want that. Not with the front belt disconnected. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that back on. And a little finagling later, here it is, popped right off. It's flat, so it comes off way easier. And now it's just time to pull all of these camshaft bearings. These are 13 millimeters. And you'll kind of want to ease them off one by one pretty slowly. Otherwise, you might get a little bit of stress because the valve springs are going to try to push the whole thing upwards. So just slowly work its way up. I cut quite a lot of this clip out, but don't take any shortcuts. Just do it nice and slow and get it up there, especially with this engine with its famously delicate cam. And here I'm having trouble with that last bearing. It's stuck under that metal cover. It takes a 13 mil and a 10 mil to get it out, which I didn't film. But there it is. With those two out, you can peel it off and fish the whole bugger out. And there we go. That's what all the fuss was about. And it looks all right, but I'm definitely going to want to clean it first so I can get a much better idea of what I'm dealing with. Now, if you'll just step right into my parts washer, we're going to have at this cam with some brake parts cleaner and then just wash it down with a cloth or something non-abrasive. You probably won't want to start with anything like Scotch-Brite or definitely not sandpaper. We're going to worry about actually cleaning it later. For now, we're getting it just clean enough to inspect it. Make sure we don't have any cracks, don't have any wear, no uh, pock marks in the rust. And here we go. My phone camera is a lot better. So a little bit dirty, but okay. That fourth lobe, you can see it's got some raised rust, 
Raised is fine. Raised can be sanded down. What we're looking for is any divots, deformations, cracks, anything like that. Hey, a little bit dirty, but not too bad. So what's next for this project? Well, we got the kerosene sitting in there marinating in the engine, so that's going to have to sit for a good long while before we could try to actually roll it over again. In the meantime, I think for the next video we'll be pulling the injection pump, just sort of going over a lot of the accessories that this Volvo Bosch injection pump has, some ideas for maybe deletes, upgrades, things like that, and then maybe stripping the head getting ready to pull it while we let the engine stew in its kerosene. Hopefully it'll free itself up. If not, we'll just have to take it apart more. But that's a later problem. Until then, thank you very much, and have a good one. Stay tuned.